Hi, my name's Dr Caroline Williams from the University of Leicester in the UK. Tuberculosis or TB remains the largest infectious cause of death worldwide. It's transmitted by infectious aerosols. The quantity of bacteria aerosolized by individuals in a single sample is known to be highly variable, as is the infectivity of individuals. Previously, it's only been possible to capture infectious aerosols using resource-intensive methods. However, these methods have been proven to be a better predictor of infectivity than sputum analysis. We've developed a novel, non-invasive face mask that captures mycobacteria directly from a person's breath. With colleagues from the University of Pretoria in South Africa, we report two prospective observational studies. The first study recruited 24 hospitalised sputum-confirmed pulmonary TB cases. They undertook eight one-hour mask samples over 24 hours. We measured each person's cough frequency and captured all sputum expectorated during this period. Bacterial DNA was extracted and quantified in mask and sputum samples. These graphs show mycobacterial output in sputum and breath alongside cough frequency for a full day. The green line shows mask output, the blue cough frequency and the red triangles is sputum output. Whilst most patients exhaled a consistent bacterial level, variable high, low and negative patterns were also observed. As seen in other aerosol studies, mask captured output was not associated with sputum bacillary load and cough did not predict output. In fact, mycobacteria was exhaled by sleeping individuals where, without any cough being recorded at all, questioning the importance and role of cough in aerosolizing mycobacteria. The sensitivity of mask sampling to detect TB at any time point was 86.5%, compared with just 20.5% in sputum. It was this ease of sampling and frequency of positives that led us to use this mask sampling approach in a pilot active case finding study. In this second study, we recruited 20 patients with TB symptoms, each providing a sputum and mask sample. Eight patients had TB prospectively diagnosed, six exclusively by mask, and those six patients were followed up at six and 20 weeks. One was lost to follow up. Of the remaining five, four became sputum expert positive at six weeks highlighting the potential for mask sampling to detect TB earlier than sputum. Understanding aerosol production and its variation is key to understanding and halting TB transmission. Mask sampling is convenient and compatible with clinical practice and may provide a useful tool in the diagnosis of pulmonary TB and insights into individuals' infectivity.